Welcome everyone to How to Win Customers on the Modern Mobile Web. We're very excited to have a guest speaker from Google join us today. Tao Tran is the Head of Global Product Partnerships uh, for Chrome and Web Platform, where she works with partners to drive early adoption of web technologies, including accelerated mobile pages and progressive web apps. In her role, she collaborates with product managers, developers, and marketers in building new web experiences that reach as many users as possible. We also have Peter McLaughlin here, Mobify's Chief Product Officer and Co-Founder. Peter is responsible for product development and the long-term roadmap here at Mobify. And my name is Carly Sear. I'm the Senior Marketing Manager here at Mobify, and I'll be your host today. So today we're going to talk about winning customers on the modern web. We know the majority of online customers are on their mobile phones, but if you're providing a responsive web design experience, you're really giving them yesterday's digital experience. Thanks to the efforts of the web community and Google's team, the modern web is really more powerful than it's ever been. So Tao is going to speak through those new capabilities and take us through how to be fast, reliable, and engaging on the mobile web. We'll also dive into a case study to look at how to attract, engage, convert, and re-engage customers with a modern web experience. Finally, we'll end with a live Q&A where you can submit any of, your, any of your questions for either Tao or Peter. Just a couple housekeeping items before we get started. The recording is uh, going to be shared after the webinar, so we'll send that out this afternoon, so make sure you keep an eye on your inbox for that. And if you do have any questions throughout, you can submit them through the Q&A button that you'll see on your Zoom webinar console. So with that, I will hand it over to Tao. Thanks again to Carly and the Mobify team for having me here today. Uh, I'm Tao, and as Carly mentioned, I uh, work here at Google focusing on uh, web uh, partnerships and outreach for a lot of kind of our early adoption uh, strategies and, and products. So I'm excited to, today to tell you about what's been happening on the web, why Google cares about it, and, what, and how we've been working across the web ecosystem to accelerate giving users a better experience. First off, I just want to say that Google loves the web. We're not shy about it. Uh, it's where there's tremendous reach and scale, and our business depends on it. Um, I spoke recently at a partner event where I talked about how much Google loves the web, uh, and had folks comment to me that they were glad to hear, hear this because uh, some folks actually said that perhaps Google had forgot, forgotten about the web, and that's not the case. Next slide, please. And so, as much as we love the web, um, we've noticed that it struggles a bit adapting to mobile. I think you've all experienced this as well, especially when it comes to speed and performance. We're seeing users leaving a site that takes longer than three seconds to load. Next click. Uh, they won't come back because your site is too slow. Next click. Uh, and they won't convert because it takes too long to complete the tr transaction. You've probably seen some, if not all, of these stats before. And seeing all this red is just bad for businesses and bad for users. Next slide. So needless to say, despite the incredible reach of the web, the transition to mobile has been rough. You could make the argument that the web does not meet user expectations. Well, at least it's, it hasn't historically. And we want to fix that. And Google has been working across the industry with different browsers and partners to see if we can take on this challenge of improving the web to make sure it's a great platform to continue to invest in. Next slide. So speed and better user experience is at the heart of our web effort. We wanted to provide features and capabilities like accelerated mobile pages or AMP and progressive web apps or PWA to enable better web. And it was equally important to change the market narrative to show that Google was serious about improving the web. So in reading these headlines you see here, you may have noticed that Team Web at Google has been pretty busy. And I want to highlight that this all just didn't happen overnight. We often get feedback that it's hard to figure out whether a Google priority will remain a focus six months later. Behind these headlines is a multi-year, deliberate company-wide effort across search, Chrome, ads, marketing, and multiple other teams to come together to lay out a vision for what users deserve on the web. Next slide, please. So there's a ton of new capabilities that make it possible to deliver to users real, useful, beautiful, immersive experiences on the web. And I want to inspire all of you on what's possible today and share partner journeys to give you ideas. And this isn't about doing something that has never been done before or couldn't be done before. Um, it's just a core concept I want to get across today. It's time to raise the bar for your users on the web. Next slide. So there are three core concepts that users will expect out of any mobile experience, and, and all of you want this as well. You know, we want you know, any site that we visit to be fast, reliable, even on flaky networks, and engaging. And I'll go into each of these principles and share some user journeys and some uh, partner stories. 
And so the first principle, next slide, is about being fast. Users that load a site, they want it to feel instant, to feel like there's content on the page right away. This is all about keeping the user's attention. As I noted earlier, a lot of users leave a site after, uh, if it takes longer than three seconds to load. Next slide, please. And so this has been a critical focus on, um, uh, you know, the critical focus on speed is really kind of the impetus for the AMP project, which was launched a couple of years ago, um, where we really wanted to focus on, you know, decreasing page load times. And AMP is a way to easily build fast, reliable pages on the web. And so it's amazing to see how the momentum with AMP, you know, across the industry. There are now over 5 billion AMP pages across 31 million domains. AMP really started out as a way to help solve a, a lot of news publishing, uh, but we also saw a keen interest from a lot of retailers on how this could also improve their product pages. And so AMP continues to evolve to support additional use cases like e-commerce. Uh, and here you see a couple of examples of e-commerce sites that have built highly interactive pages. It's possible to build a product page that updates the availability of an item, shows a different thumbnail and price, or a way to add a product to, to the cart. And this is all using the AMP set of libraries and components where you can make sure that you could reliably build a page uh, that can load quickly. Next slide, please. So Overstock is a you know, US-based uh, home goods provider that's built a lot of fast loading uh, AMP pages. And I wanna highlight that the AMP pages that they were able to build are 100% functional parity with their non-AMP equivalents on their mobile site. They implemented AMP pages using several components uh, like the AMP sidebar, the AMP accordion, so that you can uh, expand and collapse content based on the user interaction. They're live with, with AMP for over 4 million product and category pages, and metrics are looking, looking great. There's an overall uplift in conversions as well as a, an increase in revenue. About a year ago, Overstock couldn't have built this page uh, because we didn't you know, evolve enough of the components, but Google and, and other key contributors in the web ecosystem have uh, you know, continued to evolve what's possible in terms of building AMP pages. Um, and so this allowed Overstock to really step up their game in terms of what's possible. Next page. And I want to highlight that through this experience of building AMP, the Overstock team took a second look at their overall speed of their site. And I, I wanted to highlight a quote where, where they said that, you know, the, in, in the process of building the AMP pages, it really allowed them to have a conversation across product teams to realize how large the regular mobile web pages were and how slow they loaded. And so it's a chance for them to, you know, think about where else they should be investing and, and increasing the overall site speed. Um, and then they're going to continue to iterate on the AMP design to improve the metrics. And they're also heavily investing uh, in progressive web apps to take AMP uh, to the next level. Next slide, please. So on, I want to highlight another example, and Lancome is a, is a Mobify customer. It's a, this global beauty brand that produces a lot of great content, like makeup tutorials and product reviews. And they were worried that all their content would mean a slow mobile site. So they wanted to launch a progressive web app where increasing mobile performance was top of mind. I want to highlight a technique that they use where we sh you show what we call skeleton strings. And so here uh, in the GIF, as you're, as you're looking at it, you'll notice that there are great boxes you see there um, that load immediately um, once you hit the site. And so gives, this uh, gives the users a sense that there's content coming and so the user doesn't, doesn't feel like the site is broken or that they're, sharing, uh, they're staring at a blank screen. And then whenever the user taps around a button or a link, the page reacts as soon as possible. These are just some of the tricks to think about how you kind of uh, load in different parts of the site so that you're not waiting for everything to be ready before it hits um, it hits the sites, and then that gives, buys you some time with the user uh, so that it feels like the, the user is, is getting a fast, immersive experience. And I'd like to point out that their overall time to interactive de decreased from 11 seconds to less than two seconds. Um, and so that's an incredible, um, you know, an, an incredible decrease uh, in terms of, you know, being able to capture users' attentions right away. Next slide. So here, I, I, I know we get made fun of sometimes around uh, this notion of acronym soup. Um, and I really can't take credit for this visual. This is someone at Google trying to tie uh, these two concepts together. Uh, but really, it's less about you know, AMP and PWA and these technologies. It's really about focusing first on the user experience. And then AMP and PWA are just tools in the toolkit um, that you can implement together or independently 
whatever your needs are in terms of being able to provide a much better user experience on, on the web. Next slide. So an example of this is BMW.com, which wanted to completely revamp their website. Um, and B BMW recently relaunched their site as a, a kind of major content experience. Um, and they looked at AMP um, to build this from the ground up. And then uh, as they were building AMP, they decided to integrate some more progressive web app experiences, uh, like add to home screen, like caching, so that uh, they can cache and preload the AMP pages for a truly instant experience. Um, and so this, you know, is a great example uh, to definitely check it out on BMW.com um, to see how it, there's this responsive site using AMP, adding in progressive features for uh, a really beautiful, engaging, immersive experience for users. Next slide. Uh, so let's now turn to Reliable. This is about providing some content to your users, even when you're on a flaky network or when you're offline. So as I mentioned before, we never want to use, we never want users to experience a blank screen or see the loading spinner for more than even three to five seconds. And it's now possible to replace that spinner or replace that blank screen with just some basic content using some interesting caching strategy. Next slide, here I'll talk about uh, Travago, which is uh, one of our partners um, that really thought about uh, you know, their caching strategies or how to make sure that users get a reliable, re resilient experience. Um, and this is a quote from Travago. Uh, and for folks unfamiliar with Travago, it's one of the world's uh, leading hotel search engines operating in 55 countries. And so they say that mobile users come to expect sites to just work. And it doesn't matter if, you know, if it's on a flaky Wi-Fi connection or on a poor mobile reception. Um, and so when you're in the Travago site, they cache content so you're able to engage with it even if the network drops. So you get prompts like you are offline as a courtesy to users, and then you're still able to scroll through this cache content. And so we often get here feedback like, well, what does this really mean? How does this translate in terms of business metrics? Like, how do I measure uh, whether having, you know, content available while someone is offline or on a flaky network? Um, you know, how does that really matter to the bottom line? Uh, next slide. And this is where I, I thought it was terrific that Travago uh, did measure this. Uh, get to the first click the, for the first stats. Um, and so they actually took a look at um, users who were interrupted by a period of offline. And so uh, for a normal website, when you're interrupted, uh, you probably get a blank screen and then the user leaves. But for Travago, because they've cached certain content, the user still sees and, and are still in, able to engage with a number of their pages. And so what they're seeing is that two thirds of users that experience some kind of drop in connectivity are still able to continue to browse. And so after they come back, uh, online, they continue their, uh, their user journey. So this is a huge uh, number to think about. These were users who otherwise probably would have left your site if they saw, if they saw a spinner. Next click. And so this also has translated well into business metrics in terms of seeing an overall 97% increase in conversion. Next slide. And I, you know, let's talk about another service that you may rely on and need to be reliable, ride sharing. So everyone has heard of Uber. Their ride service with a global focus, building products that work all over the world. And last summer, they announced a progressive web app, m.uber, or mover. That's right, mover. Um, and so the key to mover is to deliver better global access to Uber everywhere, especially for users with low connectivity and low storage space. So even where devices, um, even devices where their native app was not supported. So users needed to be able to quickly request a ride, regardless of location, network speed, and device. And the M.Uber experience provides that for them using the web. And so one of the things to point out is that it actually works really well, even on a 2G network. So they can get to interactive in three seconds on a 2G network. And their core ride um, request app is only 50 KB. So uh, for those unfamiliar with kind of the, uh, you know, how 50 KB compares to native apps, like a lot of your native apps are probably 10, 15, 20, 30 megabytes. And so this is tiny. And then by using uh, sophisticated caching strategies, this enables uh, Uber to continue to serve content in the event of some network loss. Next slide. So an engaging site is just a site that goes beyond functional. Uh, I think you should, you know, I think we all know when we're interacting with an engaging experience. And it ensures that the whole experience is, feels really good, making it easy for the user to do what they need to do. Next slide. 
So we wanted to provide users a great experience on mobile, regardless of whether it's a native app or a web app. And one of the key features is the ability to add your website to the home screen for easy access. Another great personalized example is Starbucks, uh, from, uh, which has 20,000 stores in over 62 countries, and customers expect a high quality experience. Next slide. And often users are standing in line in the store instead of ordering ahead. And of course, lots of customers use their rewards program because they hate carrying extra cards in their wallet. The Starbucks team built this progressive web app with the goal of making it easy for users to come back, automatically sign in if they signed in before, and pay using their bar barcode. Starbucks shared that 20% of Starbucks transactions are actually done using their bar barcode. And Starbucks also implemented caching, where that means that customers are able to pay with the barcode and open up their barcode and pay even on a flaky network. And so from sign in to check out, the Starbucks progressive web app is an example of a great experience on the web. Next slide. So for an example, I, I wanted to walk through kind of a, a partner journey. And, and I think many of you in the audience are probably wondering, like, how do I get started? Um, and is this something I can just do overnight? And the reality is that for most sites and companies, um, that's just not possible. And so we have to think about this as kind of a, a long-term journey. Uh, an example of this is West Elm. And it's, uh, West Elm is a retail furnishings company, part of Williams-Sonoma. Um, and Williams-Sonoma, uh, you know, is a specialty retailer, you know, for the home covering eight distinct brands, including Pottery Barn and West Elm. Next slide. So West Elm launched a beta uh, last November, uh, and then they kept the beta as a separate experience, and then they started to direct some of that traffic there. Um, and the reason why they launched a separate beta was because they wanted to be able to experiment and, and build something pretty quickly. And then after some usability testing, um, they saw really positive feedback. Um, and, and then they started to roll out to 10% of their traffic and continue to see overall po positive metrics. And as this traffic experiment was uh, looking really good, the team went heads down to kind of re-architect their platform. Again, they own eight distinct brands. So they wanted to see if they can translate the learnings from West Elm and production, uh, make it production ready across multiple sites. Um, and so they built this really high bar that, you know, for, at West, West Elm, and then they wanted it to make sure that it translated uh, to other parts of the company. So this was a huge undertaking, uh, but was worth it to deliver a much more engaging uh, user experience. Uh, next slide. Uh, so, so one of the things that I, I wanted to point out is after they launched, uh, rolled out to 25% of their traffic, um, they saw an overall increase in time spent, as well as a lift in revenue uh, per visit. Uh, next slide. And after they saw those numbers, um, they went ahead and, uh, you know, moved forward with rolling out across all of their sites, and they're in the process of doing that now. Next slide. Another example I want to talk about is Debenhams, uh, another Mobify uh, client. Um, it's a UK chain with 240 department stores in 27 countries and, and gets about 200 million online visits a, uh, last year. Um, they're the first UK-based retailer to implement a progressive web app, and their mobile site has been growing at around 20% year over year and accounts for a third of their revenue and 55% of online traffic. Next slide. So Devonance kicked off their PWA build with Mobify uh, last June, and then four months later, in the first week of October, Debenhams launched their progressive web app to 100% of their traffic. Three weeks later, their CEO announced the launch of their progressive web app in their full year results call, saying that they've already seen double digit growth in mobile conversion rates. And by the end of the year, kind of uh, last year, marked the first time the mobile web uh, revenue surpassed desktop revenue in peak trading. And so this month, they are rolling out their tablet uh, progressive web app. Next slide. And so Devonham saw approximately a 20% conversion rate improvement and a performance increase of 37% in their checkout flow. They also started to see a behavioral shift in their customers who engaged with the site during their commutes to work. And commuters went from browsing the site on their way to work to purchasing, checking on their mobile device during their morning and afternoon commute. And so th this was just a quick survey of all the different, you know, of the different partners that we've uh, been engaging with uh, to help kind of, kind of upgrade their overall mobile experience. So many sites around the world, this is just a, a, a sampling um, of sites who have invested in their web experience, whether it's AMP to progressive web apps. Um, and all these sites wanted to deliver a better experience. 
Um, next slide. And it's just not about sites. It's about making sure platforms are also invested in the web. And so a big focus area for Google is also making sure that we can turn on these features at scale. Again, just showing our commitment and investment um, in making sure the overall ecosystem um, is, is also uh, brought on board to deliver modern web experiences. These are just a couple of examples. Um, Automatic is the creators of WordPress.com, VIP, and the Jetpack plugin. And we've collaborated with them to create the official AMP plugin for WordPress. And that will make it instantly available on millions of sites. And Magento uh, is a cloud commerce platform, which many of you have probably heard of. Um, and they recently uh, announced their commitment on integrating progressive web apps. Um, and so they're starting to integrate their te these technologies into uh, the next version of their platform. So we're excited to continue to collaborate with folks like Automatic and Magento and, and others across the ecosystem. And so going, next slide. So going back to the beginning of the present, presentation, when I said that the web does not meet user expectations, I, I wanted to modify and say that the web can exceed user expectations today. And I hope that all of you can take a second look at what you're able to do with your respective site experiences. And with that, I'll hand over to Peter and eager to take questions at the end. Thanks so much, Tal. The modern web is more powerful than ever with a lot of new capabilities that are enabling you to deliver the best experience to your customers across their shopping journey. And that's from attracting them to your site, convincing them to buy, converting them to re-engage, uh, and, and creating a repeat shopper. Tao showed us some case studies of how brands are harnessing that power of the modern web, uh, but I'd like to show you what that really means for the shopper experience. I'm gonna turn this into an example. Before I begin the story, let me show you the phases of the modern shopping journey and share some of the KPIs that matter for each phase. It starts with attracting a new customer, usually through organic search results or performance marketing. Here you're interested in the click-through rate and the bounce rate of visitors who click. Watch out on the bounce rate. Our data does tell us that most retailers are having a higher bounce rate than they know about. We call that pre-bounce, and that's people who are leaving the site before they even show up in analytics. Once a customer's on your property, you need to give them a great experience. This is the engage and convince steps. And here you want to look at exit rates, page views, their time on your site. The quality of the experience will also affect the size of their basket. And if they have a really great experience, it increases the likelihood not just of them completing the purchase on this particular journey, but it also increases the chances that they'll consider buying from you in a store or on desktop later. I want to myth bust that people don't buy on mobile. I've heard pretty much every excuse in the book when it comes to this. Statements like, we sell high consideration items, people don't trust buying on the phone, nobody will you know, spend you know, more than $500 on their, on, the, on their phone on a basket. This is a self-fulfilling prophecy. Shoppers don't trust mobile buying because most retail sites are telling them every time they come to the site that the retailer doesn't really care. I like to look at the difference between the leaders and laggards here because it's pretty telling. I have customers who are leaders who sell more on mobile than on desktop. I have customers who are leaders where an average SKU costs more than $1,000 and who have good mobile conversion rates. People do buy on mobile when their time is respected and they get a great quality experience. These are things that the modern web is enabling you to deliver and it's the expectations of your shoppers. With the conversion rate, pay attention to it because it's important for understanding traffic quality, but revenue per, per visitor is actually a more important number here. Mobile is the glue connecting your shopper to every part of your e-commerce business, so it's impacting every channel. It's much more important than just the mobile conversion rate. Re-engagement is when you encourage a visitor to deepen that relationship with you and consider asking them to opt in to push notifications if your data shows that they're enjoying the experience. I'm gonna connect all of this to a real example. I'm gonna tell you a little bit about Lily. This is Lily. Lily and I work together at Mobify uh, and we're not in the same department. Lily leads our people team. This morning, Lily was walking into work when she remembered that her mom's birthday is coming up. Waiting for the elevator, she takes out her phone to search for something from her favorite makeup brand, Lancome. Like most shoppers, even though she knows the URL of the Lancome site, she's just going to search for what she's looking for on Google using Google like an interactive bookmark. When she does get the search result, she clicks on it. The AMP page loads in a second, and she's already browsing by the time that she's stepping into the elevator. So far, it's taken about a second for the page to load. And Lily's had a few seconds to start browsing. Tao shared earlier that 53% of shoppers abandon after three seconds of waiting on their phone. So Lily doesn't have to worry. Her AMP page loaded in less than a second. 
since she started browsing, less than 10 seconds have elapsed. Lily steps into the elevator, presses the sixth floor, and looks down at her, at her phone and tries to add the gift to her cart. And then she continues to shop. Of course, there's usually no reception in the elevator. Fortunately, Lily doesn't need it because progressive web apps can preload experiences. There's an offline prompt in the bottom of her browser that lets Lily know she can continue shopping even without connectivity. The elevator doors that open on the sixth floor uh, would normally might interrupt Lily's browsing experience by say a colleague stepping by to say hi. But instead, so when that happens, she can stop, toss her phone into her bag and walk over to her desk. But at this stage, this interruption may have caused her to not complete her purchase. About 25 seconds. That's how long Lily had in total between pulling out her phone, loading the site, waiting for the elevator, and being interrupted by a friend. In the attention economy, time is a precious resource. And you can't assume that you're going to get more than 15 to 30 seconds of it, or that your experiences uh, will, be, will, be, will be seen by your, by your visitors for a longer period of time than that. So you need to design for that reality. So remember the stat that that's how shared. 50% of shoppers won't even wait three seconds for something to load. So you need to eliminate all loading from the experience. At lunchtime, Lily reaches for her phone, notices a push notification from Lancome, which is reminding her that the perfume's still in her cart. She opens the notification and completes her checkout. The task is now complete. Her mom has a birthday present. I mentioned before that conversion rate may not be the most important number to watch. Think about what this journey has done for Lancome's conversion rate. Actually, it's good, but not perfect. Lily's visit has been split over multiple short sessions. When we create a great shopping experience, uh, I often see small gains in conversion rates, but really big ones in revenue because of exactly this. Revenue per visitor shows that Lily's a great customer, and that's the important metric to pay attention to. Great mobile experiences encourage shoppers like Lily to return often. It increases their purchase rate also, but it generates a lot of engagement, which means frequent short sessions. That's great for your business, great for your brand, but if you're only watching conversion rate, you might not know it. Measure continuously from the moment she typed her search. With the interruptions uh, aside, this entire purchase process took about 45 seconds of Lily's time. Let's fast forward to next week. Lily receives a push notification for 20% off her next purchase as a thank you for her loyalty. And she's back on the site again, this time thinking about her sister's birthday. Again, more revenue per visitor. Stitching this entire thing together, this video is exactly 27 seconds long. It takes us from a search engine result page through to a completed purchase. Ask yourself if your shoppers can buy from you in less than 30 seconds on their phone. If they can't, is it any wonder that your conversion rates aren't what they ought to be? Lily's been through all the phases of a modern shopping journey. First, brand discovery on Google search, then a great first engagement through an accelerated mobile page, she finds what she's looking for thanks to the offline mode of a progressive web app. The conversion event is triggered by a push notification, and then she's drawn back into the experience later by a timely notification about an upcoming promotion. Digital acquisition for retail takes place almost entirely on the web. The web is and will remain the retail marketing digital top of funnel for the foreseeable future. The app store is a bit too clunky to be a good target to acquire users. With an app store, you're adding more than a minute to your acquisition flow when we have average mobile session lengths, 30 seconds or less. Most of your visitors are never going to get through the app install process. Whether your customers coming to your web property through SEO, SEM, email, affiliate, social, or influencers, you need your experience to be great and fast. And that's where AMP comes into play. Accelerated mobile pages can load in less than a second. AMP pages can serve as targets for any of your acquisition sources, including organic, email, and SEM campaigns. Ask your team how happy they are with the bounce rates of your mobile CPC campaigns today. And what would it mean for your business if you had 25% fewer bounces on those clicks that you're paying for? However you acquire your customer, you pay for them somehow. Even direct traffic is paid for by great products, word of mouth, spending on traditional media, and the cost of the great customer experience. Facebook, AdWords, affiliates all cost you, and most retailers aren't making the most of that cost by providing great experience when the visitor does step in the front door. When someone comes to your site, they've said they want to engage with you. And instead, they're often doing the digital equivalent of waiting in line. If they're waiting 10 seconds for your responsive site to load on their phone, that's one third or more of the time they have before the elevator arrives or they get the next chat message from a friend. Most journeys take minutes. That's where a progressive web app shines, winning with speed and experience. 
Think about whether you're maximizing the return on your marketing spend by doing great things with the traffic after it arrives at your property. The speed of AMP and PWA doesn't just help with the current session. Our research, validated by reports from Google and Akamai, shows that visitors who have faster experiences return more frequently, purchase more often, view more products, and have larger average basket sizes. Engagement is where a native app sometimes plays a role. For customers that only transact with you a couple of times per year, an app is not going to be something that they're ever going to install, or if they did install it, they're going to remove it before the next time they buy from you. But for loyal customers buying a couple of times a month, you might want to add barcode scanning, integration into in-store technology, loyalty programs. There's a low ROI in building apps from scratch. So look for a platform that can get you there faster. Both on the web and in the app, push notifications let you reach out to your customers with timely, relevant, actionable notifications that can supplement your email marketing campaigns. Think about how you're engaging your shoppers today. And you might want to dig into how well your email campaigns are working with Gen Z and late millennials who typically use email a lot less than generations before them. Lily is a happy shopper today. She doesn't know why everything just worked with her Lancome experience and she doesn't have to. And that's the best part of these technologies. No new actions need to be learned. No app store installs need to be done. She used her phone exactly the same way she's been using it for the past five years, but this time everything was perfect. In fact, uh, the digital journey she was on this morning is only possible because of new technologies that are part of the modern web an experience that wouldn't have been possible a few years ago, and also take apart advantage of the best parts of the web that have always been here. That is ease of discovery, a low barrier to entry, and when we combine those with the best that the modern web brings, she gets a consistent, fast, and immersive experience as well. Think about mobile as the front door of your brand, the busiest store that you have. Lily couldn't have made the purchase she made today on a responsive website. Not only did Lancome close the sale, Lily now has a more favorable impression of Lancome than she did before she came to work today. That makes her much more likely to buy again. Maybe she'll buy on her phone. Maybe she'll buy on her desktop. Maybe she'll buy in a store from one of Lancome's distributors. Either way, the relationship has been strengthened between Lily and Lancome. The converse of this, a bad digital experience, extends to a shopper's entire perception of a brand. This has a much bigger impact than mobile sales. This affects in-store and desktop sales as well, and your brand equity. Just think about your own behavior. How do you react to brands that don't respect your time? Using a physical analogy, if there are two stores in town and they're equally convenient to drive to, but one is always making you wait in line, which store are you gonna pick? If you had a particularly bad experience, are you ever gonna go back? I've told the shopper's view of the Lancome story. Now I'd like to share a few of the business results. This is what happens when you harness the power of the modern web and deliver the best experience to your customers. Not only did Lancome receive an award from Mobile Excellence last year, uh, beating eBay, but they've developed a reputation in the market for being thought leaders in the mobile space and uh, being included in case studies with Google and talking at conferences and on panels, representing the brand as a leader in the mobile space. All my best moments as an entrepreneur are when a customer tells me something, a story about their success. And when the director of e-commerce from Lancome called me up and said, holy, you, you can fill in the blank, did you know we have the fastest website in L'Oreal? That for me is gold. My team built a product that made our buyer look and feel like a winner. One last data slide here. Uh, I do recommend that you look at your trends year over year. Lancome's year over year data is telling a pretty powerful story. Their business is doing great everywhere. It's growing desktop, tablet, mobile. But mobile's where it's really shining. Through the lifts, combined in AOV and the improvements in conversion rate, Lancome mobile growth outpaced desktop by 7.5 times. Creating great experiences is a journey. You don't need to get everything done at once. Find a partner who's gonna work with you to create success starting in the first few months. It is fully possible to have results uh, three plus months into a project like Debitems and work with them uh, to, to build out repeated ongoing wins. Mobify is helping retailers like Lancome with a digital experience platform uh, that lets them be leaders in their customer experiences. There's a lot more to Mobify than the technologies. Mobify's platform makes it possible for commerce teams to keep up with the pace of change in technology and ensures that your shoppers will have a great experience with your brand. 
I'm working with top retail brands to grow their business. So I hope we can work together to help create the best possible experience for your customers. Thanks for joining us today. We did leave a lot of time for questions, so we'll be checking in on those now. Perfect. Thank you both, Peter and Chow. Uh, we'll jump into questions now. As I mentioned, if you want to submit any questions, you can do so through the Q&A button on uh, the webinar console. And um, we'll get started. Looks like the first one here is for Chow. Uh, are progressive web apps available on iOS? Sure, so we get this question a lot. So um, progressive web apps is this umbrella term for just an upgraded web experience. And so because it's just a website, it works everywhere uh, in, every, in any browser that can support a URL or a link. Um, but there are certain progressive web app features um, that you know, do rely on different browser support. Um, and so you know, Firefox, uh, Edge, uh, uh, Samsung, have all, and obviously Chrome, um, have all announced support for many of the progressive web app features. Um, Apple um, recently also announced support for something called Service Worker, which is actually um, the uh, underlying kind of technology or API uh, that enables a lot of these uh, use cases, especially around caching. Um, and, and, and caching allows you to preload content um, and so that it can load more instantly. Um, and so Safari um, you know, has now shown that they're on a path uh, to supporting some of the progressive web app te technologies, uh, but not all of it just yet. However, if you build a site um, it's, you know, that's faster and more beautiful and immersive, it will also uh, work, you know, just as, you know, work well in, uh, in iOS. Perfect, thank you. Um, okay, we've got another question here that's broken up into a couple different ones. So the first one, how do customers track the KPIs or monitor performance? I can answer that, Carly. Um, so typically, uh, retail teams are using the same tools that they're already familiar with. Uh, so, for example, if you're using uh, Google Analytics or um, you know Adobe Analytics, uh, Core Metrics, all of these can be made to be compatible with the PWA. Uh, if there are considerations that uh, that you might want to uh, know about before you you dig into the project, for example. How are those analytics going to work with offline mode? That's something where a platform like Mobify takes care of a lot of those details for you. Um, but all of the analytics tools that you're using to track your KPIs today could be used in a PWA environment. Um, they just need to be part of the specification that you set out when you're starting off the project. Perfect, thank you. Um, another one here, PWA as a concept, is that really pushing the full value of what a mobile optimized experience really means? Or is it selling more to the IT team? Business uh, just about understands what an app is and does Mobify offer business user tools to, mobify, to modify the mobile experience? So Peter, we'll hand that one to you. So Mobify does provide business tools that modify the, um, the experience. So we do provide, for example, content slots that um, would allow you to uh, that would allow you to uh, change uh, parts of the experience based on who that visitor is, the context of that visitor. We also integrate with uh, all the major CMS vendors uh, that uh, um, that would also have targeting tools that allow you to modify the experience. It really depends on what it is that you're looking to achieve. Um, we might be able to do it either with Mobify's out-of-the-box functionality or with a um, with a third party, uh, with a third party plugin. Thank you. Uh, Tao, this one's for you. How long does it take to launch a PWA? I noticed two different timelines in the case studies presented. Yeah, and I think that this is a question we, we, we get we get a lot, because people want to understand how long uh, it will take. Um, I, I think it really depends on the setup of your site and um, how long ago you've actually touched the code of some of your uh, 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 website experiences. Um, and so I think, you know, the, the reason I wanted to present two different timelines is just to show that um, kind of the, you know, it will be different um, for, for every team. Um, and so for some folks, they might want to start by just testing out some of their AMP pages, and that could take, you know, just a few weeks. Uh, for, for folks who are thinking about a kind of a full redesign or a re-architecture of their uh, site and platform, I mean, that could take months, um, if not, you know, a couple of years. Um, and so I, I, I think what we really want the takeaway to be here is that there are now a lot of web capabilities and tools that are available to you. Um, and so you could, you know, do what, uh, do what makes sense, you know, based on the needs of your site and your business. 
something you might want to consider uh, when you're looking at your timelines is whether an elevated point of departure would be useful for your team. Uh, a typical Mobify project with a normal retail scope takes about 90 days. Perfect, thank you. Um, Tao, another one here for you. What's on the roadmap for AMP? What are the current UX limitations of AMP compared to a PWA? Sure, so um, for, for AMP, there's a, there's a number of things that we uh, you know, announced at the uh, AMP conference a, a couple of months ago. Um, one of the things, we're still, we're still very focused on making sure that AMP supports a lot of the e-commerce uh, features. Um, and so you, you saw uh, a bunch around being able to uh, make it much more interactive. Um, we're looking at being able to uh, choose like date picker. We're also exploring, you know, areas where, you know, could we do help with payments or sign in uh, for, for AMP pages as well. Um, and so there is, you know, we, you know, feel free to go to ampproject.org and we actually keep our roadmap um, uh, updated there, but there's a lot of focus um, on, on e-commerce. And then also the, the other piece is that, um, you know, we did make a, a pretty large announcement around um, seeing if AMP could be more integrated into the, you know, overall web platform. Uh, we've heard some feedback that, um, you know, URLs or AMP pages, having a different URL um, is, you know, hard for users. And I, I think people are wondering why that's the case. And so there is an effort um, to you know, allow AMP pages to show the original URL of the web page, um, and so that's a large effort that's that's underway as well. As far as the current UX limitations, I mean, you know, I, I think it really depends on the on on your team and what they're familiar with. Um, you know, we're continuing to ship uh, different components that are making it pretty UX rich. Um, I didn't mention it uh, this morning, but. Uh, AliExpress, which is this major uh, site, actually a, a part of the Alibaba group, launched their entire e-commerce experience in AMP. And so uh, the AMP team was also surprised to see uh, them uh, build their entire experience in AMP. And so given that and given the scale at which AliExpress is operating uh, around the globe, um, it didn't seem like they um, there were any UX limitations on their end in terms of converting their entire site into AMP. Perfect, thank you. Um, another question here for Peter. Does Mobify have a partner or reseller white label program? Yes, we do. So we, we work through partners. So uh, all of our uh, customer builds are done with a partner. Sometimes that is done with uh, a partner who is already working with that customer. Other times uh, it's a partner that uh, we jointly uh, you know, make a proposal to the customer. Uh, so if you're interested in, in partnering with Mobify, please do get in touch with us and uh, uh, we'll talk about the next steps. Thank you. And Tao, another one here for you. What's the benefit of integrating AMP with a PWA? So when you're integrating uh, AMP, you're, it, it is a kind of a new library or, or framework. Um, and so I, I think folks use React or other frameworks as well. Um, and so the benefit here is that if, you know, I think what we've seen is that um, when when some of the, the dev team started experimenting with AMP, they saw that it was actually pretty easy to make sure, you know, there was like specific guardrails in place, and so it was easy to make sure they can develop and produce uh, fast pages um, at scale. And so the, then the inter so the integrating AMP means that um, your you're, you're able to, uh, you know, go across multiple teams. So as long as they understand the AMP library and framework, um, they can all all develop uh, AMP pages. Um, in terms of how AMP fits into uh, a, a PWA, I mean, the, again, it's just more about the tool sets and, and the ease at which um, you want to, you know, use AMP. But you could also integrate other frameworks with with a progressive web app as well. Um, and so I think there, this is kind of the the flexibility of different tools available on uh, on the web platform. Um, I think because you know AMP has principles around uh, fast, <laughs> and 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 a PWA is kind of like the, uh, the 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 set of new capabilities you want to add on. Um, they're really complementary, but you, you don't have to use them together. Thank you. Uh, one more for Peter here. You mentioned something called pre-bounce rate. Can you explain what that is? Sure. Yeah. So uh, when a visitor arrives at a, a website, um, 
most of the tracking is done via a tracking pixel. So uh, what happens if the visitor leaves the site, the site takes so long to load that they leave before even the analytics tracking pixel fires? Um, that's a bounce. The person came to the site and exited probably before any content even displayed on the page. Um, but they're never going to show up in your analytics because that tracking pixel never fired. So that's, that's what we call a pre-bounce. Um, and it's much higher than you might expect. Uh, you know, if, if, you're, if you're looking at that stat that was shared earlier, you know, 53% of shoppers don't wait three seconds, and then you're, you're thinking to yourself, well, but our bounce rate isn't, isn't that high. Um, think again, it's entirely possible that you're just missing uh, a lot of those bounces because people are leaving before those tracking calls are being sent back to your analytics backend. Thank you. And Cal, one more for you here. Are there any limitations to tracking activity on AMP within an organization's Google Analytics? So we've done a ton of work uh, here. I know that when we uh, initially released AMP, there was a, we got a ton of feedback around how TA works uh, with AMP. Um, and I think it was a, a pretty big release last fall uh, in terms of integration with, um, with GA. I think I'm, I'm not going to be able to get into all the details as to what um, our progress with uh, GA and overall uh, analytics. Um, you can definitely go to uh, ampproject.org and you can see um, our roadmap for, uh, for analytics. And also, um, we've seen a lot of people, um, a lot of developers post to our uh, GitHub page um, to, to, to let us know where they're running into issues as well. Um, again, because it's an open source project, um, we're, we're, we're tracking very closely um, all the feedback we're getting uh, from, from the ecosystem. Now, what I will say that what I'm seeing with, with analytics is that um, a lot of times there's, there's very specific uh, use cases for, uh, for different sites. And so what we're trying to do is capture kind of the most common patterns that we're seeing in terms of issues and challenges um, and, then, and then addressing it that way. So, um, you know, letting us know um, if you're a, via GitHub, um, I think it's the best way for us to kind of understand the, cha the ongoing challenges. Perfect, thank you. And that's all the time we have for today. So I wanna say a big thank you to Tao and Peter for uh, their time today. I wanna say thank you to everyone who joined as well. If you do have any follow-up questions, feel free to email those to hello at mobify.com. As I mentioned, we'll be sending out the recording of this webinar this afternoon as well. So you'll see that come through in your inbox in the next couple hours. Um, thank you all and hope you have a great day.